candidate selling their policy to us. So the next uh, process is the questioning. So we, we're going to ask them a generic question that the three candidates are going to answer. So we let the rest of the candidate sit while we will invite the three candidates to come here and we will ask them that question. And we give them each to answer three minutes. At least you can't go beyond that, just only. Please, can you share with us uh, your, your recently, I mean, uh, you were recently criticized by somebody or involved in conflict uh, issue. So the question is, how did you make, I mean, how did it make you feel? How did it make you feel? That is a very good question. Um, how do you resolve conflict or how do you move on or address when somebody is criticizing you? Well, that is important because that's what we get here in the community space. For some reason, we are volunteering to give our time, our effort, our energy, but yet some people have the audacity to just point out the worst in the situation instead of addressing or actually acknowledging the decent thing that actually happening because you volunteered yourself. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. That is something I truly understand. And when there is, I, I, I understood from one of my friends, he said, what is peace? I said, that is a really good question. Because in my language, we say male. What does that mean? We said, peace be with you. But what is peace? Peace is when there is no conflict and there's no confusion. And confusion happens when there's a third person who is not present, but they are influencing both parties. So we need to recognize that when somebody has an opinion, there is so many contributing factors that are sort of motivating him or her. And I would not want to get involved in that because that is, they're entitled to their opinion, right? But if you have a very clear question or you have a very clear concern and you come and ask me, then I'll be more than happy to show you the perspective that I'm seeing it from. Because the only reason why you're seeing it like that is because you're seeing it from a different perspective. But if we come and stand together, we'll probably agree that what you're seeing as a nine is probably a six to me. And if we come on one side, we'll understand it's a six here, but on that side is a nine. And that is really how you go about trying to address conflict, because conflict arises when there is misunderstanding or there are other contributing factors that we don't understand. And we don't want to get involved in that. We want to say, okay, what is it that we can do to address the issue that you have? Don't worry about what other people are saying. Then that person, if they're honest enough, they'll be able to tell you exactly what is concerning them. And then as two people, you might be able to address that. But if you identify there's a third contributing factor, then you will try to find a way to like, look, me and you, we really don't have a problem. But there is something else that is pushing us. And we have to understand that if we can't get to that third person and get them in the same room, then don't even worry about it. Because we need to address the issue really affecting us. What is your problem? What is my problem? What is the solution that we can use to overcome this particular problem? Yeah, thank you once again, uh, members of commission for that question. Uh, conflict. Uh, why? Why is conflict? Uh, when I do understand that uh, people have different ways of understanding. We have a different way of understanding. So as a leader or as a person, when someone is criticizing you or saying that why this happened and why this happened, it is how they think. And when we look at the problem, problem is, is, is seen in a different perspective. So if a person has why you do that, that how that person look, look into problem in her own or his own perspective. What I do as a person who is being criticized or as a leader, I listen to that person, listen to why he is questioning uh, or he is asking that. After listening to that person, then I have to understand and we have to communicate. So communication, communication is the best way to resolve problem. Uh, as communication, you can communicate between two of you. You have that person, why he feel that way. 
that person will explain exactly and then you will understand and then you express your thinking or how you know that thing uh, on your own. If it, if it reach into the state that you cannot understand each other, there is what is called mediation. When I have a problem with saving and we talk about it, first step is to try among ourselves. If we are unable to manage that or to resolve that, then we bring in third party. We can bring in a lucky. So then we explain ourselves. And then with the third person as a mediator between us, then we can understand. Uh, in the context of the community, I have addressed this uh, in many management committee that I have led or I have been a part of. Uh, since when I was young until now, I am addressing conflict. Also, it won't be very difficult for someone who have family like me, because you all know family, when you are married or when you have a family, there is always a conflict. Uh, but you resolve that conflict, and that's why you still in your house, uh, have relationship with your partner and your kid and the other person. So problem solving uh, is what I have done in the past, I, I am trained uh, when I was in the Robert G. Camp. Uh, I was trained as a peace uh, education teacher. So I was teaching peace uh, to members of the community and to school. So this is a very, uh, a very good question and it is a part of leadership. You have to be criticized. Thank you, Peter. To the conflict and criticize. I always find that, especially in my workplace, I will bring one example. During the COVID-19, when people was locked down, and we see our young one across the border country, uh, Queensland, there was been criticism even at work. So I was finished my lunch break, and I was sitting in my table eating. So some, my, one of my kids called me, and I was speaking in Dinka. So because in my break, I thought I have freedom. So I was talking. Meanwhile, I was talking, one of the colleagues said, no, you guys don't, don't respect anywhere. Even now, look what you've done. Your sister brought the COVID to Queensland. So in that, I was just relaxed. I was just relaxed and listen, because if, if someone come with, you want to fight you or just hit you with something to confuse your, your, your environment, you need to listen. And that listening is a, is a key to, to re reflect what the, why make somebody angry. You need to find out. And when you finalize, you need to see if she calm down, you need to explain. This is what's a me, I'm, I'm this person. So criticism is part of my life. And I always, I never care about somebody. Even you criticize me, I will come and say hi to you. And I'm still talking because for myself, I always think that if you say something that is not going to make me sick, why I care? So I always just move on and find a way to <laughs> and find a way to come out of the situation or other way around. Sometimes, as a, uh, South Sudanese as us, we have a problem. We are not listening. We are not listening. If your sister come angry. You need to calm down, or your brother, or someone make, find out why a person is like this, because his daily life is happy, and you need to bring that a solution and fix it. If you can't, if you said, no, I can't even want to see you, and he's still fighting you, you need to involve other group to see and solve the problem. And this is my understanding for the criticism. Thank you. Now, so the floor will be you people to have the questions and we give you also three questions and there will be one in this row, one in the middle and the one in the last row. So this question will come from this end now. The person sitting behind you.
are familiar to me, and I hope I am also familiar to some of you. Um, my question is to the candidates. Um, so one of the issues that uh, some of us here are concerned is that of um, the image of South uh, Sudanese uh, uh, members um, to the other wider members of Queensland. And so what will one of you do should you become the next president of this community to improve the image of South Sudanese members to the um, other members of Queensland? Um, and what connection or uh, resources would you be able to ex uh, exploit uh, should you help them? Thanks. That was actually a really good question. And it's one of those questions that is also covered in our vision. The vision is to see us united, great, everybody want that. To see us look after our well-being, physically and mentally. And to also ensure that we make a positive contribution to the wider Queensland community. And I can assure you that in this room right here, or before, we had two people who are South Sudanese people who have been recognized as order of merit in the Australian. It's a very difficult list to actually get recognition, but we have two gentlemen here tonight who were with us today. One of them was Ben Bull, and the other one was Elijah. And this, and this is to demonstrate to you that we are making a positive contribution to the wider Australia, not only in Queensland. Now, what we have to do is that we have to fight the negative images that the media, the mainstream media is trying to impose on us. We are doing great things and we have demonstrated this by actually speaking on our behalf and promoting the goodness that we can offer. And we have done this recently. In fact, if you would have seen my LinkedIn uh, uh, over the past six months that I've been leading, there's been over thousands of recognition of somebody like Nen Peltang, who is an engineer coming back as a child, you know, like a refugee, and then against all odds, becoming a very successful uh, young man who is now working for the um, um, Airbus. Right? We have people um, like you know, um, like myself who are now a town planner for Brisbane City Council. We have a lot of people within us here who are doing remarkable things, like Theo Atem, who is actually designing the, 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 the electrical system that will probably empower the upcoming uh, tunnels that are going underneath the bridge. These are people within our community, and we have business owners within the community, and we need to be able to promote them. And by promoting them is for us speaking for ourselves, uh, like somebody like Rose, who has started Diverse Connection, to ensure that our diversity is recognized because we are in the most multicultural society there is, the most peaceful society there is, and we need to ensure that our contribution is well recognized. And the only people that can do that is us. Having media representation like he does is to ensure that the goodness that we can offer is actually um, displayed so that everybody else can see what we can offer including our cultures and everything else that we can offer. And that is how we're going to address that because maybe the media may not talk to us, but they will listen to us because since I've been here, we have made written representation to all the way to the parliament, to our local members and the media when they are doing things that don't add up to us and we need to be able to speak up. But more so than other, we need to be able to promote ourselves because if we don't do that, maybe nobody else will. So thank you. Thank you uh, to the members of the general public uh, for the first question. Uh, that question, uh, I look at it in two ways. You know, anything that, anything bad that uh, is counted on our community is in two ways. One, it might be other people uh, from other communities that are doing bad things in the name of our community. And second, it might be a members of our community who are doing wrong thing. So to, to rectify this or to correct this, we have to, uh, as leaders, when we are elected or as a leader when I am elected, I say it in, uh, in my policies that it is one of our vision to talk to the media that anything which is not done by South Sudanese should not be ours. And we will accept what we have done. And uh, what we have done, you know, in every society, in every society, there is no good society. Society is comprised of bad and good deeds. And as South Sudanese, it is not exceptional. We have those groups, uh, we have those people who can do good things, and those people who can do bad things. So what do we do? 
uh, to rectify any bad thing uh, that damage our uh, image before the public is to engage our community members in a positive activities so that if, if any anyone from the wider community is seeing uh, South Sudanese doing the wrong thing, they can also see a South Sudanese doing a good thing. And that's normal for any community. So if we do a lot of good things, then we are selling our image to others that we are a good people. And how are we going to do it? That's why we have this leadership. And that's why we are seeking for unity to unite ourselves so that we show, we all show the good thing that we have as a community to others who don't know us. Uh, if, if you are not participating in any activity, then someone will Thank misconcept you. Uh, my brother, for asking that question is very important. To bring that image, we need to celebrate. Whoever, when you are, the children finish year 12 high school, the community must have a celebration day to show and invite other stakeholders to show them that we are South Sudanese, we can, we, our kids, they're doing this. Not all of us are bad, and we will fix. And when we start that system, the other children that are behind us who are practicing or other people involve them to those activities, and the media as well, we will set up the live media for our life, what we are doing, what we are achieving. Every year, we have to have a system of celebration for something that we achieve across the 64 tribe. Not only for one community, but we need to deliver that. If I'm, I'm a community leader, I need to set up the system that we, every six months or every year, we have an educational party. We have, and it's not a party, but we call other uh, community and other stakeholder to come in, including our sister um, uh, uh, Rose. She's the one setting up the events and they just don't want to see her, but she's doing an amazing job. And Rose now, she's a popular at the moment. Everyone can see her like she's here now. If the Kawajan people, they might say, oh, let me take a photo. We will need to take our photo for our people. And that's the system I want to bring. Yeah, we can't just ignore what we have. We need to celebrate that. So even somebody have a big truck, you go in and say, can you take a photo with me and then share it? That's the only way we can reflect and bring that back to those people who think South Sudanese are better. Thank you. But it will be the middle team, so we ask you. Thank you. I think my question will be very clear and short before the time is again asked. So, um, Philip, from the committee president. So, my question is that, to be honest, you guys, three of you, we are human beings. We are not full, we are not complete, unless God. What is your weakness? What is your weakness? And how to overcome it? And how the social community will know that you overcome this thing?